quick team fighting out of Las Vegas, 247 pounds. He's 12-0 with 11 knockouts. He has never been past four rounds, and he's coming off a seven-month, one-week layoff. His last five opponents have a winning percentage of 37%. 37 and 57 is their combined record. So he's really stepping up tonight against 26-year-old Dale Crow. Dale hails from Ohio. Fighting out of Kentucky, 225 pounds is Dale Crow, former tough man in the tough man competition. You take a look at his record. He has two losses in his last five, one to Devaro Williamson, getting stopped in the third round. He suffered some bad cuts in that fight. So we're getting set for our first battle of the evening. Dale Crow, of course, on Friday night fights had a technical decision, a technical draw against Michael Moore on cuts. He was involved with Greg Page in that knockout in Kentucky. Has losses to Fred Zakendo and Lawrence Claybay as well. So Dale Crow and Samuel Peter getting set. You know, after the loss to Devaro Williamson, Crow said, I either have to quit this sport or get my act together. And he's bounced back with two straight wins against subpar competition. But uh, we'll get a sense of what Samuel Peter has, Teddy, in this fight tonight. Peter is from Nigeria, the homeland of Aikabi Abuchi. We saw Friday Ahunanya last week put one of the most lackluster performances on the table against Terrence Lewis, and we'll see if Peter will bring more to the dance. I can tell you now, one thing Peter always brings to the dance is power. Punches are born. They are not made. Peter is a born puncher. Victor Allegria is the referee for this first bout between Dale Crow and Samuel Peter. Okay, I'll be my command at all times and protect yourselves at all times. Touch him up. This is a tough test for Peter, Teddy, because he's never been past four rounds. He's coming off a long layoff, and that man, Dale Crow, uh, brings a different style into the ring, and he'll be someone that Peter will be tested against. Except for one thing, Crow is there to get hit, and anyone Peter can hit, he has a chance of getting rid of. Crow is a southpaw, and as you said, much more experienced than Peter, and very game, but marginal when it comes to ability. In the Olympics, Peter, in his second bout, lost to Paolo Vidos of Italy. Crow had 15 amateur fights. Fell in love with tough man competition. He lost his amateur status and then went on to a pro career. He said when he made the move from the cruiserweight up to heavyweight, he didn't do it properly at first. He just added the weight. He's since added conditioning, flexibility, weightlifting to put the weight on more naturally. Crow, as you've said, we've said, is, has fought the much better opposition of the two here tonight. He's much more experienced, but he is limited and marginal ability-wise. We do have to mention, 10 months ago in his fight against Devaro Williamson, the pro was down three times in the first round, and he suffered a cut on the left eye in the second round. He's had cuts in his career. The best thing going for Crow is experience, his gameness, and being a southpaw. Straight left hand there by Crow. Peter trying to deal with the southpaw style of Crow. You can see he's not comfortable with it. He's pawing with his jab, not snapping the jab. You would have to figure he would be snapping the jab with an orthodox fighter, feeling that he can land. With the southpaw, he doesn't feel as sure about that jab. You can see what Crow came in here to do, Bob. With his experience, he's not a dummy. He knows the man in front of him has the power. He knows that he has been stopped before. He knows he has the box. He's trying to move a little bit. Keep Peter off balance. Keep Peter from setting his feet. And then counter. Heads came together that time. There's Peter trying to move in for his power shots. Crow has been cut before, mentioning that heads coming together. Yes, Peter's a big puncher, but he's a wide puncher. And when he does things like that, he can leave himself wide open to the experienced Crow with a chance to counter. 
Yes, Pete is a big puncher, but yes, Pete also keeps his feet a little wide and shows you that he's a big puncher. That means he needs you to cooperate. He needs you in front of him. It means he needs his feet set to punch. That means if you do what Crow's doing, which is to move to the sides, you can have some success, which Crow's doing. Now Crow cautious in round number one. Samuel Peter trying to land his power shots as the heads come together in quick fashion. So we begin round number two between Samuel Peter and Dale Crow. Clearly with the numbers in round number one, Peter was busier. They both land nine punches. Peter landed seven power shots, so did Crow. Very close first round. I thought Crow landed the cleaner punches. And to take a guess that I might be accurate, even when you can't be completely sure because you said it was a close round, I would just go by the fact that he's still standing there. If Peter landed clean punches, I don't think Crow would be standing there anymore. And I'm going just by that because I saw Peter land a couple good counter punches. I went the other way. I gave it to Peter just because I felt to press the action a little bit more. Very Quick close clean. first round. Quickly. Take your pick. As I just said in between rounds, this is the kind of fight Peter can make mistakes and still land a big punch and end the fight suddenly. Crow has to try to fight a perfect fight. There is no margin for error in this fight for Crow. We saw that a couple weeks ago. People were in Miami. And another thing going on here, Crow, the smaller man, does not have the power to hurt Peter, has not shown the ability to hurt Peter. And as the fight goes on, it's going to be more and more difficult for him to keep Peter from coming forward. Yep. Peter can help. Peter, though, on the other hand, can hurt Crow. You know, Teddy, not to the same level, but when we had Wayne Braithwaite on a couple weeks ago, he would make, make, make mistakes, but up, break, break. he had the power and eventually he landed that one clean power shot and ended the fight. And he had the better chin than Revaya Springs, who was trying to take his cruiser.